Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a beginner friendly super cute project that I chose because I am gone over the weekend. So I have to do something that is not taking up too much time but still super cute. So we're gonna make a really really nice voluminous, is that the word? Voluminous. Volum voluminous. Voluminous. Skirt with ruffles on the hem and it's gonna be really really cute. So um, let's make the pattern I guess. Let's go! So I made a circle skirt before, that was actually the one out of my collection that I made last year. I made a video about that, you can click up here and I actually explained to you quite nicely, if I dare say so myself, um, right at this timestamp you can uh, skip ahead and start watching there, how to construct a circle skirt. And I also made a, um, a, a PDF download that you can download for free on, web on my website to go with that video, which has all of the numbers that you need already pre-calculated, which is something that I use all the time, so very, very helpful. Um, for this video, actually, we're not gonna do a true-to-size version of a circle skirt because I want to gather it up here in my waist, so I think I'm just gonna size up four sizes or something like that, I'm not sure yet, um, just to have some gathering right here. And then we're also going to add a strip on the very bottom, on the hem, that we're also going to gather like really crazy. We're going to use just simple rectangular strips, so we're just going to cut salvage to salvage, not sure yet, maybe 15 to 20 centimeters wide, and we're going to put that onto the hem. Um, I think this project is pretty easy, uh, not a lot of rules to follow, because I'm just gonna cut out a waistband that fits me. I'm gonna put some elastic in the waistband, and then I'm gonna cut out a size for the circle skirt that is too big for me, and just gather it to fit the waistband. I think that's the easiest method without having to measure a whole bunch and, you know, to make it any more calculated than it needs to be. So that's my plan for now, and uh, then we're gonna go ahead and actually put the hem on the... put put the ruffles on the hem and do all of this stuff, so not even gonna bother making a mock-up. I'm just gonna make the pattern. For this pattern, I am actually gonna show you how I put this together. In case you didn't know, I got myself an A1 printer, so I don't have to tape a whole bunch of stuff together in my patterns anymore, which I'm super happy about. Uh, people who follow me on Insta already know this, I got it like two weeks ago or something. Um, so really happy about this. But for this pattern, I actually made it in a way so that you only have to tape together this right here. So piece A and piece B just get together, taped together here in the very middle of this piece. And this is uh, supposed to lay on fold and you can put this on the other way folded fabric, so not salvage folded onto salvage, but you know, lay it flat and then flip it up in a way, if that makes sense. For this video right here where I made the James Bond dress, I used uh, satin, uh, this really, really amazing orange colored satin. And I also ordered dark red and dark green satin, which I haven't used yet, but I figured that the dark red would also look really, really good for this pattern. So that's what I'm gonna use instead of buying new fabric. And as you can see right here, obviously the edges don't, like they're not, it's not wide enough. So I am actually gonna fold this um, open and then flip it up right like this so that the whole piece fits on it. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Also, apart from 
this number right here, which is half of a circle skirt, by the way. I used the measurements for double XL for S, so I'm gonna gather it in the waist, I already said that. And then also on top of that, we're gonna use some salvage to salvage cut pieces, which are 20 centimeters wide, and I calculated that you need 4.2 to 4.7, depending on the sizes. Um, and for an S you need around 4.5, so four and a half strips. I'm just gonna cut out five and then gather and then use however much I need um, so that I don't have to measure in my gathers, you know? So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And that's the five strips. Now we need a waistband. A waistband is just the height that you want and your waist circumference. I will double the height because that's how I manufacture waistbands. I said in the very beginning that I'm gonna do an elastic waistband. I probably still should do that. So I'm not gonna use my 64 waist, but I'm gonna size up to an S, uh, which is 68 centimeters and plus two centimeters seam allowance so i'm gonna cut out 10 times 70 centimeters for the waistband and um that's gonna shrink down to my xs waist so the elastic is gonna be 62 to 64 centimeters in length so that it's gonna do its job so here we're gonna cut out another strip that measures 10 centimeters in width now we can put this away. And then this strip here gets shortened to 70 centimeters. So I'm gonna cut off the selvage edge right here and then measure 70 centimeters. And this is the only piece that we need to put interfacing on, but it's important to put interfacing on your waistbands in general. It looks so much nicer. Always put interfacing on your waistbands. Um, just, it just looks more professional. We're gonna put a button tape in the very front that also needs interfacing. So the button tape is gonna be our closure, obviously. We're gonna do a separate pattern piece for. We just have to measure the front the seam, basically. So that's 70 centimeters plus your four centimeters waistband plus your 20 centimeters ruffles, whatever, on the very bottom. So that's 95 centimeters in length for our waistband and then we're gonna make it three centimeters thick double that put seam allowance on and then you have your your measurement for your waistband we're gonna do that for both sides so we're gonna need two of this so 95 times 8 97 times 8 because seam allowance and we're gonna have to cut out one after the other because our fabric only measures 70 centimeters in width maybe a bit more 75 centimeters in this case 140 is the standard measurement for fabrics, usually here in Europe at least. But we're gonna cut out 97 times, what did I say, eight, I think. Let's do eight. Then we have three centimeters wide button tapes. Just like that, and now we have all of the pieces that we need. So it's needless to say, obviously, that if you purchase my pattern, all of these things are already included. Of course, you just need to cut it out in your size and you're good to go. But this is such an easy project that I just wanted to show you how the pattern pieces work together, the numbers and everything, because it's really easy and you can just do it yourself. But of course, if you want the pattern, link is down below. I'd be very happy if you support me and keep videos like this coming because that's the most direct way to help me with production costs and everything. So thank you so much. For everybody else who just likes to watch my videos, I am super, super happy all the time that you sent me Instagram stories of you enjoying my videos and uh, you know learning from my content and so on. It would be amazing if you could just hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post. And of course, follow me on my Insta because I am updating you on my Insta stories daily and yeah. News like my printer, for example, are out there as soon as they break. So <laughs> thank you so much. We're gonna start off with preparing uh, the button tapes and the waistband. So I already put interfacing on these, as you can see right here. And for both of these, we're gonna prepare them in the same way. If you've been a 
long-time viewer of my channel, you already know the drill. We're gonna fold them in half, because that's how they're gonna lay in the very end. And iron this. And then we're gonna fold the seam allowance of one side inwards as well and also iron this. This is just the easiest method to prepare for sewing later on because it's just gonna save us so much time and fiddling around and pinning and stuff. So I always recommend doing this. And now we can lay this aside and I'm going to do the same to the button tape pieces. Next up we have the hem ruffles and we need a long strip from these. So what we're going to do is actually sew them together. I am going to do a French seam just so that the inside looks neat as well and I don't really want to have an overlock seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put wrong sides together. So just like this. I'm going to put wrong sides together, sew this cut this down to around three millimeters, three to five, and then fold it uh, right sides together and sew another time. And that's gonna make a really, really nice um, inner seam. And from the outside, it just looks the same as every other seam, but on the inside, the seam allowance is hidden. Um, so this is a really, really nice way of uh, manufacturing, you know, more elegant pieces so that the inside looks really nice as well. You don't have any, any overlock stitches. And I'm going to do that for um, probably all of the skirt because this uh, ruffle and then the attaching of the ruffle, these are the only two seams that would be visible as everything else is enclosed through uh, the waistband or the button tape. So you won't see any seams there anyways. So I want to keep this, make it nice on the bottom as well. So I'm going to do French seams here. I'm going to prepare this, make one long um, thing that I'm going to ruffle with my ruffling foot. So now it's just uh, ironing this and I'm also going to iron all of these folds from the fabric when I stored it out. And then I'm just going to iron the seam allowances towards one side. This is by the way how it looks like. So this is the wrong side. You just have this small little thing here and then from the right side it just looks as every normal seam looks. So I recently got this domestic machine and I thought because it has all of these crazy stitches that I know the domestic machines have, but I just never had the opportunity to use them. I bet it's like old news and you never use them or whatever, but for me it's pretty exciting. Anyways, um, so I tried a few out, I don't know if you can see them, but these are a few of the stitches that might be an option for hemming the skirt. But the thing is, I have six meters or even more to hem and it takes a while to do these decorative stitches, you know, and six meters of them. I don't know if that's the best solution to be honest, but I really, really like them. Maybe I'm just gonna do another project with um, decorative stitches like this, maybe here ruffles on the cuffs and then, um, you know, like a small embroidery or something with this machine, but I don't think that it's worth the time and also the thread and so on uh, to, you know, use that as hemming for this skirt. But nevertheless, I'm really excited because I can finally do buttonholes. My cat wants to come inside. <laughs> I can finally do buttonholes without my needles breaking. I have uh, this foot for my industrial machine to make buttonholes, but it's not working perfectly anymore, so my needles keep breaking. And for my last project that I had to do buttonholes for, I broke so many needles for the green dress. Um, you can click on it 
up here. <laughs> so I don't want to do that again. So I'm happy to have this uh, machine that does these for me. And it also sews on buttons. I don't know how that works, but we're going to try everything out. Um, so I'm going to put this aside until we actually sew buttonholes. And until then, I'm just going to hem the ruffles as per usual. So folding five, centi five millimeters inwards twice and top stitching them. I'm going to do that on my, the, on my machine while I'm sewing. And then we can go ahead and put the whole thing together. So let's go. So now my ruffles are nice and neat on the hem and I'm just gonna go ahead and sew along the other side with my ruffling foot uh, so that I'm gonna have um, you know this piece gathered. Uh, you can do that by hand of course, I highly recommend getting yourself a foot for that though because it makes things so much easier. If you ruffle more than once it's already worth it, so um, I'm gonna do that with my foot. So now I have a ton of ruffles, really nice, and they're gonna get sewn onto the, the this piece, the skirt, which quite nicely already is only one piece. So I can go ahead and put these two pieces together. I'm gonna think about how I'm gonna put these together because I don't want the seams to show. So maybe, maybe I'm gonna do this kind of piping seam. So enclose the ruffles while I'm folding the hem. This might work, or it not just might, it does work, but as the hem is curved, this might be a tiny bit problematic, but shouldn't be too much. I think that's the way to go in this case for me. Obviously, you can just put right sides together, stitch and then overlock. That's the easiest method. It looks totally fine as well. It works totally fine. I just don't want to have the overlock uh, seams on the inside because to me, this is like more of an elegant garment. And I don't want to use anything that bulges up any more than it needs. So I'm not going to use extra piping you know, like bias tape. So I think folding this as I go while under the sewing machine is the best way. Just gonna quickly measure that the gathers are enough for the hem. And then when it fits, which it should because it's plenty, um, I'm just gonna do this as I sew on the, on the machine. Not gonna pin anything before. Wow, I think I might have just have enough of the ruffles. This is pretty spot on if you ask me. Okay. <laughs> So I'm just gonna put these two together. So many ruffles. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna iron the seam allowance up so that it's gonna lay like this, just because it looks way nicer, the ruffles look nicer. And I'm gonna trim the excess right here as well. So I feel like it's too long. This is the length that I made the skirt right here. And it just, it's not really anything. It's not maxi, it's not meaty. It's like a mixture, a mixy, I don't know. So I was thinking why not make a shorter in the front, longer in the back moment as, so that the ruffles like also show nicely like this so you're gonna have like this sort of side that would look interesting wouldn't it and then just you know cut this to be more of an oval shape i think i think that looks cute let me just put some pins in and then we're gonna see on the table if this is a good idea or not so as you can see here the, the pins uh, that I put in make the straight line down, which is not something that we are gonna do, just because that's just gonna look really weird. Uh, we're gonna do a 40, bleh, 45 degree angle right here so that it's gonna look nice from the front. And then I'm thinking about doing a pretty wide oval so that it's not gonna be too crazy looking so usually folds so usually folds get pretty 
drastic around this area as that's the curvy part. So we gotta be careful, not too curvy here, so like pretty broad of an oval. And I guess I'm just gonna go for it, honestly. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So obviously now the button tape in the front doesn't fit anymore. So we have this part that we just cut out and we have to shorten our button tapes by that distance, which would be right here. Okay, cool. Now we can continue <laughs> and hope that everything that I was doing right now is also correct, but it should be. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna fold the lowest point, so the lower edge of the button tape, right sides together and just close the short side right here. Same thing on the other one, just make sure that you have, that you're doing it on the correct side. It should be, you know, the opposite. Okay, let's do that. So cutting this down to just around three millimeters. And then I can turn this over pretty easily. Okay, now we can go ahead and pin the non-ironed piece to the wrong side of the fabric and sew all the way down to the hem. Okay, so now that this is on, we're going to iron the seam allowance into the button tape. And now we can just fold it over and pin it just on top of the stitching line that we just did. And now we can stitch very closely to the open edge and top stitch the button tapes on either side down. Okay, so button tape is on. Let's gather this waist line right here to fit our waistband, this here. So it should be probably half the size it is now, obviously, because I cut out this oval shape. It's even bigger than planned, but that's okay. Let's hope that it's not gonna be too much of volume at the hips and, you know, not be so flattering, but we're just gonna gather this. I'm gonna do that by hand just to have more um, guidance, I guess, more control. And then we're gonna put it onto the waistband. Okay, and now to continue, we're also gonna put right sides of our waistband together on both sides and close the short ends and turn them around. So for the elastic, I'm gonna use this right here. This is three centimeters wide, so this should be good enough for this four centimeter wide uh, waistband. I'm gonna cut off, I'm gonna do 63 so that it stays comfortable. And I'm gonna attach uh, this on here, 
onto the non-ironed up side. So this is the one that's gonna lay on the inside. Without twisting it, obviously, we're gonna put this right in here. And so here and here. So now when we turn all of this over, we just need to put the elastic onto the inside like this and just pin it in place in a few spots so that it just stays inside for us further working on this skirt. So I'm just gonna pin it like right here on the center back and then maybe somewhere here. So like I'm gonna put three pins in and now we can put this onto the skirt. I'm also doing it the same way as I did my button tape. So I'm gonna put the non-iron side onto the wrong side of my piece and sew them together all the way. Now we can go ahead and also pin or try to iron the seam allowance into the waistband. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and pin directly. And I'm also gonna pin this just on top of the stitching line that I just did. Don't worry too much about the gathering stitches because we can always take those out. And now so closely to the open line right there. The skirt is basically done. Now we just need to add buttonholes and buttons and then we're completely done. So let's do that. Okay guys, that's it already for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Of course, I'm gonna show you how the, the skirt looks like worn. I just quickly also wanted to mention that I'm gonna make um, like two versions of this pattern, like in one basically, because I bet there are people who want to have like the original um, design of the skirt without uh, the shorter in the front and the longer in the back kind of thing. So I'm gonna leave that pattern as is and just draw in an alternative waistline for all of you guys who want to make a replica of the skirt that I made. Um, so I'm just gonna put that out there. Uh, both will be included in the pattern that you can uh, get um, through the link down below and also in the pinned comment as per usual. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays, so you can keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, check out my Instagram. I am posting lots of behind the scenes and you know, videos and stuff uh, of my life. And also I am posting a lot of reels in which I am trying to give you these small, short little tips and tricks that you can just watch on the go. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, also check out the link down in the description below. The handle is exactly the same as here on my YouTube, so you can also just search for me. Check out my Etsy store, that's the most direct way to support me. And I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys! <laughs>